Welcome back to the Shane and Fallon Show. Yeah, sorry Jason. Yeah. He's under the weather, but we're holding down the fort. Yeah. Our first guest today is a TV news legend in Southern California, interviewing countless celebrities during her 18 years on the air in LA, and now she's helping people everywhere make life a little easier with her hacks on social media, like this. Then I drizzled on some hot honey, again for that sweet spiciness, and popped it all in the oven at 450 for 20 minutes. Once I pulled it out, I threw on a bunch of fresh arugula, some balsamic glaze on top of that, and finally some marinade from the mozzarella balls. And I'm gonna be honest, this is the second one I've made in a week. It's so good. Okay, I finally tried you. Okay, that Trader Joe's pizza hack alone has more than 3 million views on Instagram and TikTok. Lisa Breckenridge covers food, fashion, fitness, and a lot more on her popular channels. And we'd like to welcome her to the show this morning. Hi, Lisa. Hi, Lisa. Hi, ladies. It's so nice to be with you. We're glad you're here, too. And I'm sorry Jason missed you because I know you two know each other. Um, I adore him. Oh, my gosh. There you are. That was the very first night I met him. Oh, my goodness. Fast friends. <laughs> uh, yes. In Malibu of all places. He oh, tends to nice. be that way. Yeah. Yes. Um, yes. <laughs> Lisa, obviously, you're a familiar face to those in Los Angeles, Southern California. How long were you anchoring there? And I always love to hear how people got to that point. Did you always want to be a, a news anchor? Um, it was I, in college, I was going to be public relations. And then after I graduated and I didn't really have a job, my dad said, Do you need to find out what you want to do? And I started interning at a TV station in Santa Rosa, like a little teeny tiny TV station, and just started learning from the photographers and the reporters. And then I went to Stanford, and like the rest is history, just started sending out all those videotapes, like mm -hmm. one does. And, and bopped around from Yuma to Reno to Sacramento, and then of course, LA. Um, I've been here since 1999. Wow, okay, first of all, I popped over to Reno before I came to Minnesota also, so. <laughs> um, <laughs> Shout out to the biggest uh, city in the world. KOLO was the station I worked for there. Oh no, I can't hear. <laughs> She's telling you the station she worked for. Oh, okay, gotcha. We were talking earlier, you interviewed like every famous person in the world because they come through, they're talking about their movies, their TV shows. Looking back now, who stands out to you or is there a moment that you really loved? I mean, there are so many. I mean, because obviously it was everyday people I interviewed. And I always say I did the, the best of the best and the worst of the worst among us because my career was hard news to entertain. Oh, there I am with Kevin Costner. Adore him. He always requested for me to interview him when he came on the show. And oh. Stevie Wonder sang with him completely out of tune. Never should be allowed <laughs> to sing on television. Um, Mindy Kaling. I mean, literally everyone came through. It was moments, though, like um, George Clooney, when he first stopped on a red carpet for me and said, oh, Lisa, it's my girl. It's my, and I was like, oh, I didn't know I was your girl, but, but the show was very popular here in Los Angeles. And so it was definitely a show that the celebrities loved to watch because it was kind of crazy. I mean, like your show, you never knew what would happen mm -hmm. and it usually did. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I have to ask you a question. People, one of the biggest questions I get, people say, oh my gosh, how amazing is it that people do your makeup in the morning? And I'm like, nobody touches my face but me in the morning. And I say, I think though, like in LA and New York, there's still people who do makeup. Did you get your makeup done every day? <laughs> Great question. Every I love it. single day, oh, I would walk in at um, about <laughs> three o'clock in the morning. I'd oh. plop down in the makeup chair. My floor director would hand me coffee, and I would have hair and makeup every oh. single day. And wow. I always said, after I had my twins, that was the one reason I went back to work because at least I knew I'd be showered <laughs> and have hair and makeup. Because as a new mom, you know that. Oh happen. my gosh. So true. I love that. When did you start making the shift and start sharing more on social media? Well, you know, when um, my last few years at my job here at Fox in Los Angeles, um, they started telling us, you really should be posting. There's this thing called Facebook and this thing called Instagram, and you need to work on your brand. And I'm thinking, I'm a journalist. I, I don't have time to do all this social stuff. And they said, no, it's, it's really important for you. And so I started like doing stuff then, but it was really just behind the scenes. I would pop up my camera. And when I was doing the noon show, we would go live. And I think maybe more people watched the live because it was all behind the scenes stuff that was going on during commercial breaks. And then after 
I no longer worked at Fox. I thought, well, I, I still want to be able to tell stories, but I was a woman in my 50s and there wasn't really a job for me in LA because being 50 is like being 100 when you're in Los <laughs> Angeles. And um, kind of the same thing. And so I'm like, well, I, I'll just start doing stuff on a website and on my social channels. And it kind of just went from there. And, and in fact, I still do work for NBC. Like one day a week, I'll go and do a lifestyle story for them. So it's nice. I always say, and I named my website Happily Lisa because it was kind of a nice alternative to really the death and destruction that I had covered um, on top of all the celebrity interviews. So it was kind of a nice, nice transition. Sure. And you started doing these food and life, ha life hacks. Were you doing this before or is this stuff you started investigating and like learning more about as your social media was taken off? I always cooked on my social media. Um, I wish my mom's recipes and on my website and people really like those. I think people like really good, healthy, um, you know, items. And then I started sharing stuff from Trader Joe's because my children, twins left for college this year. So all of a sudden I'm in an empty house. I'm not cooking for a family of four anymore. And so I thought, well, I can do these things that are easier to make and don't take as much time and you're not making such a huge spread. And I started sharing those and they started taking off as, you know, like you never know what's going to take off um, on Instagram, you know, whether it's someone's foot or, you know, someone's food. <laughs> it runs the gamut. I love these, Lisa. Like I am the person who like follows along with you and I go to Trader Joe's and I love when it's like, here are three items to put together to make a meal or five items. I love Trader Joe's and I love doing that. So when you have these hacks or like recipes online, I am the person who's like, thank you so much for making life easier. Yeah, I'm so, ha and same, same for me. When I first went to Trader Joe's, I was overwhelmed when I was during quarantine and I was like, I don't know where you find anything. And then we started learning how to combine the different things. I'm like, oh, now I see, now I get it. Mm -hmm. So I still do my healthy recipes, but it's always the Trader Joe stuff that does the best. <laughs> yes, that's funny. Okay, besides food, you cover fashion and fitness, including something I've never heard of and I have to know more. What is drum boxing? Oh my gosh, it was so much fun. It's like a comp, it's a guy who started it was um, a trainer for boxers and they went to him because he was a percussionist and they knew that there was like a link between the, the brain and the body. And so they combined the two and he started this um, fitness center out in Malibu, of course. And um, it's really taken off. It, it's really fun. I did it for a live shot and there I am making a fool of myself. That's kind of my second nature. <laughs> oh and, um, and it was so much I was exhausted by the time the four minute live shot was over. I can imagine. Okay, so Shane, we need to get the skull line out here and Ooh, then they can start go. drumming and then we can do the boxing along with it. That so sounds yeah. Perfect. <laughs> All right, Lisa, we have more with you coming up. It's happilylisa.com. We'll talk after the break and check out your hack for dressing up store bought noodles. Yes. Yeah, I'm, so I'm gonna excited. pop them in the stove right now. Let's go. Perfect. Welcome back. We are, it is just so quiet. I know. <laughs> Here, Thank I'll you. Thank you, Shane. There you go. <laughs> We're joined again by former TV anchor turned social media superstar Lisa Breckenridge from happilylisa.com. Welcome back. We missed you. Hi, ladies. <laughs> I missed you too. While we were apart, I threw these noodles in, um, in the pot and okay. we're letting them boil for about four minutes. So this is my super easy noodle hack, like for those yummy peanut noodles. I don't know if you guys have chin chin out there, but it kind of remind me of the chin chin noodles. And um, so that's what we're doing. So those are in there for four minutes. And then I'm going to show you how I make the sauce. It's super, super easy. You guys ready? Yes. Okay. So what I love about these, they're, like they're squiggly noodles and they come individually packaged. So that's why it's perfect for like, if you're just one or two people, it's one package per person. And in each package comes this little soy um, sesame sauce. We'll use this in a moment. So what you do, I'm gonna make my look. See, what's so fun is I did cooking demos every day on television when all the celebrity chefs would come in. So it's fun to be able to do them now for myself. So that's peanut butter. This is just peanut butter from Trader Joe's. So that's okay. one tablespoon of pe peanut butter. This is the uh, gochujang sauce, which is like a little Korean sauce. It is spicy. So depending on your spice tolerance, um, I do a tablespoon, 
You can do more, you can do less. You put a tablespoon of that in. Thank you for the warning. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> yeah, no, it is. I like spice, and so you have to be careful. This is that sesame soy sauce that I showed you out of the packet. Now we're just going to pour that in. And so that is going to be the base of your sauce. My noodles are almost done, but what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get a little of the um, boiling water. And you know, I'm sure you guys know this, but when you do pasta, it's always good to save a little bit of that um, water that has been boiling because it helps break up whatever sauce you might be making. And especially this one, because you've got to get that peanut butter nice and loose. I usually so. remember that, Lisa, as I'm pouring it all down the drain. <laughs> yep. And I'm like, oh, right. and you're like, like oh. to save some. <laughs> I know. I, I put a measuring cup underneath my um, pot. So oh, it's just always there. Smart. So yep. I remember to do it. So that way you'll kind of remember like, oh, I'm going to need this because it helps loosen things up. So there you go. See, I'm going to do this little one to get it nice and mixed. My noodles should be about done right now. So let's go get those off. That's so crazy um, that those the are way, done in like four minutes, yeah, which is just minutes. the quickest meal. That's so awesome. By the way, on Thanksgiving day, my oven broke, no oh. joke. So, so right now I only have the stove top. They're having to order parts. It's like a special special stove or something like that. Wow. And the parts aren't easily read, you know, available. And for so someone there, who I does just, this for a living, like comes up with cooking hacks, that's gotta be a little challenging. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, it was a little frustrating. <laughs> I'm like, sure, I'm like so maybe, convenient. Yeah, on Thanksgiving. There may have been more drinking than usual that day. Like, <laughs> like, like shuttling things back and forth to my boyfriend's house and we ate like five hours later. So look, ladies, oh, that nice. is it. Oh, that is God. literally all you have to do. Now, what I like to do is um, put some edamame beans on top because, yes. and again, all just from Trader Joe's, that's going to give you um, a lot of your protein. Or you yes. can throw chicken in. When I served it to my son, because he lives um, closer to home for college, my daughter's in New York, um, I did like a little soy chicken, and he loved it. Um, okay, so there are your edamame beans just from Trader Joe's. Throw those on top. For the protein, you just throw in the microwave. I chopped up some onions, and you just throw those on, and there you go. Look uh, at that. That looks so there good. Is Beautiful. Under four minutes, right? That's how easy it was. Let's give it a quick little taste. Or do you guys have any there that you're trying? I feel like it's rude to eat without you. Conveniently, Jeff, the producer, made some and left them upstairs, unable to share with us. So excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I feel like that was a planned mistake. Yeah, it did. That was not a happy accident. Oh, oh he says, said it's his second time he made yeah. it this week, by the way. So clearly it's very good. <laughs> yep. Thank you very much. Exactly. Well, thank you for giving us simple ideas that are easy to do. We do appreciate it. And oh. I, I just have to say, like, you know, you, you did TV. You were on TV for so long. Your career just keeps going just in a new direction. Yeah, absolutely. Well, yeah. And, and you know, and I think that's the thing is women, I'm 58 now, we're always reinventing ourselves. And I think it's just important. I wasn't ready to be done. And I mean, I love a camera. I love a live TV camera, you know, so I found ways to kind of transition. And I don't think I've been transitioning yet. So that's amazing. Yeah. I love this for you, Lisa. And I also think we have the same air fryer. So I just thought <laughs> I would throw that out oh. there. <laughs> I just wish um, we had the same amazing. kitchen. It's beautiful. <laughs> it's a good one. It it's is. A good one. All right, Lisa, thank you. And thank hopefully you. you can come back soon because I know Jason's bummed that he had to miss mm -hmm. us. I know. Tell him I felt Jason feel better. Miss you guys. Will do. All right, Lisa Breckenridge, thanks for joining us. You can check out all of Lisa's videos on Instagram and TikTok. Her handle is at Lisa Breckenridge or check out happilylisa.com. I love that. I am seriously going to make that. I love, first of all, the one thing my whole family can compromise on is noodles. Yep. <laughs> like so every true. age is into it. I will have to remove the hot sauce for the toddler because even, she's like a true Minnesotan, so even ketchup is spicy at times, <laughs> you know, but um, I have to make that for sure. I love it. It's too spicy. There's literally nothing <laughs> spicy in there. <laughs> yeah. Nothing. <laughs> all right. We'll be right back. She's awesome. <laughs> she's so good. I love her. I'm going to look her follow